Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today uh, we're going over air filters. All right, I want to give you the real kind of lowdown on the air filters. All right, so right here you have a hog hair air filter. This would come with air handlers. All right, this is really not that great in my perspective. Once again, this is just going to be my perspective on these things. All right, so you know, you're going to have your own perspective. I'm just trying to kind of give you uh, one perspective on these things, but uh. I really don't feel like these really trap much dust, all right? Um, they come with air handlers or fan coils, whatever you'd like to call them, and they're supposed to be washable, all right? But really, you're just kind of wetting the dust onto this, and it just gets stuck, all right? You can blow them out before it gets um, wet. You know, you can blow them out first. You know, you can do certain things with them, but I don't really feel like they trap the airflow. But what what's the real issue here is... What is the purpose of an air filter, all right, for a heating and cooling system? So I want you to think about, uh, you know, a vacuum cleaner, okay? Uh, a vacuum cleaner, you know, has a small outlet on it, or actually a small inlet, okay? And you're sucking up dust into that vacuum cleaner, all right? So you think about a return in a house where multiple returns is like a, just a big vacuum cleaner, all right? But it's not on the ground. It's like on the side of the wall. So is it really for cleaning the air in the house? Because that's what the homeowner has been sold with a lot of advertisements and things like that. You know, they're all sold, you know, to buy these, hey, these, these great air filters to take the dust out of the air in the house. I mean, they will take some dust out of the air in the house, but the real reality is to save your, your evaporator quill or your heat exchangers, okay? If you don't have an air filter and you have the airflow blowing in this way and through in your quill, you have an air conditioning quill that's wet, all right, and you're gonna attract dust onto the side of this evap quill, and then all of a sudden you're not gonna have any airflow going through the quill, okay, in order to make it through to the other side, okay, and then go into your supply duct. So the real purpose of the air filter is to stop the dust before it gets to the wet A quill where the dust would just get stuck onto here. And a lot of times these are in such a bad spot to where you can't really clean them off without pulling them out, all right? A lot of times they're sitting right on top of the furnace. Sometimes you can get to them by taking off the face shroud, okay, right here, all right? Sometimes you actually have to, um, you can't really get them off completely, you know, with a refrigerant charge in here. Sometimes you can, all right? Um, but sometimes you have to alter this just in order to get into it, in order to clean the inside, all right? So you gotta take this cover off in order to get into the inside just to clean it. All right, a slant coil that would be inside of an air handler or fan coil, that'd be a little bit easier to clean, all right? Um, but if it's an A coil that's right butt up next to a furnace, it's a little bit harder to clean. But anyway, that's the real purpose of it. It will take some dust out of the air, um, but <clears throat> the thing you wanna be aware of as a heating and cooling technician is Homeowners and building managers sometimes will forget to change an air filter. Like in this premise right here, this thing is clogged solid, okay? You cannot see any light through it, all right? All right, here's another one, all right? But it's not clogged all the way solid, but it's on its way to being that way, okay? So, um, when you have a filter that's clogged solid, we're on its way to being clogged solid. If you have a PSC blower motor, all right, one that looks like this, where you have a capacitor and a blower motor, what's going to happen is, as you restrict the airflow, this blower motor is going to slow down, okay? It's not going to draw more amperage, you know, or more watts. It's just going to slow down. It's actually going to use less electricity, all right? The problem with that is you're supposed to have the exact correct amount of airflow going across the heat exchanger for the heater and across the indoor coil for air conditioning mode. If you don't for a uh, <clears throat> air conditioning coil, what's going to happen is the A coil is going to freeze, all right? And um, in reference to a heater or a gas furnace or an oil-fired furnace is you're going to end up overheating the heat exchanger, all right? And the heat exchanger is going to have manual reset or um, most of the time there'll be automatic reset like a plenum switch, temp switch. All right, um, but you're going to be kind of hurting your furnace or, and you're certainly going to be hurting your air conditioning system. All right. All right, in the case of 
a variable speed blower motor such as this right here this is a ECM 3.0 that's a variable speed that's going to work harder and that's going to cost you more electricity all right it's going to try to overcome the friction from the dirty filter all right when it does that it's going to work a lot harder to the point where you could end up breaking the variable speed blower motor and that's happened quite a few times where I've had to pull the variable speed blower motor out and or at least replace the hub okay just due to very very high resistance from the air filter all right so it's going to the variable speed blower motor is going to try its best to overcome the friction due to the dust on the air filter all right so being a heating cooling technician you know i would like i would like my my business or my homeowners to um, have the best chance of not ruining the equipment all right that's what's the most important in, in, in my thought process all right so a lot of times I'm I'm installing pleated air filters that are four inch wide all right or <clears throat> other ones you know that that it could be even wider all right what's happening with this is the larger four inch uh, pleated and, and different sizes three inch or you know all the way up to a much, a much wider size what you're doing is you're actually increasing the surface area, okay? So they last longer, all right? And you're, you have less resistance for the airflow trying to get through here if you increase the surface area while still trapping your dust, okay? So this is better on my end because if a homeowner forgets to clean their filter, they might make it through, you know, six months or something like that. You know, sometimes a homeowner might make it through a year. Some some people can't make it through very long at all because they just have so much dust wherever their return is. They're just sucking so much dust in here that they do get clogged up. All right, so my preference would be to install 4-inch air filters or, you know, um, though they don't trap as much dust, they tend to not get clogged as fast. All right, so 1-inch throwaway filters. The pleated ones just tend to, that are 1-inch, they just tend to clog up too fast, all right? And then we're at a bigger issue than having a little bit of dust on the bottom of the evaporator coil, all right? So we're, we're talking, I mean, like I said, this is just one person's preference, all right? Um, but these will last longer than a, than a pleated air filter. And of course, if you have a homeowner that is, or a building manager that's changing the filters constantly, then let them get whatever filter they want to get, all right, or or use, you know. Um, if they want to use a one-inch pleated filter, then that's great, you know. And a lot of times, just so you know, nobody should be really getting filters at Home Depot or Lowe's um, or, or some, somewhere where they're maybe paying four times as much, I mean five times, six times as much. It's ridiculous. A lot of times when I'm doing an installation, I'll end up getting 12 filters, a box of 12 or a box of 24 filters, so they can last, you know three years, you know, two years, whatever it may be. These are 30-day throwaway filters. You know, they can get changed out every 30 days, or you might be able to stretch it to a month and a half of running time, not, you know, in between seasons. So, you know, you might go through six filters a year or something like that, all right? So you can last a pretty long time. So I tend to do that, whether I'm using these filters or uh, larger pleated filters, all right? There's different styles of these larger pleated filters. I usually order the homeowner, you know, the filters for them. So if I'm using the one inch ones, that would probably be because we're installing filter return air grills in the walls or in the ceilings, all right? And if the filters are getting changed at the unit, I would like to install these larger pleated air filters, all right? Because that will reduce the dust. It won't allow much dust to get through. They, they don't clog as long. But I tend to not do any arguing whatsoever. Say, like, if a, if a building manager or homeowner, you know, is set on, you know, like, they want to get the certain type of filter for cleaning the airflow. I basically just tell them my thought or my worries are that they get changed on time, you know, and uh, that I don't want the system to break, okay? I don't try to educate the customer against all of the advertisements that they've been seeing for years and years and years about the filters trying to you know clean clean the house with the airflow and stuff or you know with the dust and everything so but that's just like i said this is one person's perspective and uh variable speed blower motors they can break you can you can potentially damage the air conditioning system 
um, X13 blower motors, okay, I don't have one to show you right here right now, but X13 is kind of the in between a variable speed blower motor like this, all right, and a PSE blower motor. Um, so they will try to overcome it a little bit, but not as much as a variable speed blower motor. All right, so ECM uh, X, X13, all right, that'll break, um, like I said, the PSC blower motors, they slow down. They slow down, they draw less electricity. The more resistance there is in the ductwork, okay? And a PSC blower motor looks just like this. An X13 will try to overcome the friction Okay, and a variable speed one will just do it until it dies, basically. You know, it's going to try to overcome it, overcome it, overcome it until it draws so much amperage in here that it ends up just ruining the hub. All right, so there are some uh, things to think about. Like I said, uh, you know, everybody's going to have their own perspectives on this, and please feel free to write your comments down below. I appreciate all of them and everybody's perspectives, and I hope you enjoyed yourself. See you next time, AC Service Tech Channel.